Today I've got a really nice divisibility problem for you, and it has to do with power towers. And I think the internet loves power towers. So in particular, we want to find the smallest natural number that does not divide the difference of these two power towers. So check it out. We've got 7 to the 7 to the 7 to the 7 to the 7 as our first number. And from that, we're subtracting 7 to the 7 to the 7 to the 7 to the 5. And I found this problem, although without solution, in an uh, issue of the College Math Journal, if you want to check that out. And in this article, they build some pretty nice techniques for dealing with power towers. That being said, we're not really going to use them here. We're going to use a more just like brute force technique so that we don't have to approve any of the technical results from this paper. And so we will use something called the Carmichael lambda function, which is almost like upgraded version of Euler's totient function. So how do we define it? Well, lambda of n is defined to be the minimum of the following set. And that set is all natural numbers m, where if you raise a to the lambda m, you get 1 mod n, where a runs over all integers that are relatively prime to n. And then, well, here's a fact regarding the values of lambda. So lambda of 1 and lambda of 2 are both 1. Lambda of 4 is 2. Lambda of 2 to the r is 2 to the r minus 2. And that's going to be for r bigger than or equal to 3. So lambda takes on, well, a little bit different values if you're at larger powers of 2. And then lambda of p to the r is p to the r minus p to the r minus 1 if p is an odd prime. So that's the same thing as the Euler phi function. And that has to do with the fact that powers of primes have so-called primitive roots. And that's not only true for powers of prime, but two times powers of primes as well. Now, this lambda function kind of makes up for this fact that not everything has a primitive root and patches that hole, but that's kind of neither here nor there. And then, well, what about products of powers of primes? In other words, just standard natural numbers. So lambda of p1 to the r1 times p2 to the r2 all the way up to pk to the rk is the LCM of lambda evaluated at all of those parts. So that's pretty interesting. Now let's, for example, do lambda of 72. Well, observe that lambda of 72 is going to be the LCM of lambda of 8 times lambda of 9, because 8 is a power of a prime, it's 2 cubed, and 9 is also a power of a prime, it is 3 cubed. But notice that uh, lambda of 8 is equal to 2 by our formula right here. It's going to be equal to 8 minus 4. Uh, sorry, by our formula right here. But notice lambda of 8 is equal to 2 by our formula right here. And then lambda of 9 will be 9 minus 3 or 6. But now if we take the least common multiple of 2 and 6, we pretty clearly get 6. So lambda of 72 is 6. Okay, so now that we know something about the Carmichael lambda function, let's see how we can use it for our problem over here. Okay, so jumping into our problem, I'm, I'm going to rephrase it a little bit. I'm going to rephrase it as finding the smallest natural number n such that 7 to the 7 to the 7 to the 7 to the 7 is not congruent to 7 to the 7 to the 7 to the 7 to the 5. But now when doing reductions mod n with powers, we can repetitively use the definition of the Carmichael lambda function. So let's spell that out. So in other words, to reduce this power tower a sub 0 to the power a1 to the power a2 to the power a3 all the way up to the power a k mod n, we reduce a0 mod n and a1 mod lambda of n. And that's because, well, by the definition of the Carmichael lambda function, this exponent is being reduced mod lambda of n. Much like what we see with the Euler totient function. Like I said, just an upgraded version of that. And then a sub 2 is going to be reduced mod lambda of lambda of n for essentially the same reason, just 
applied again, and so on and so forth, a sub k is reduced mod. I'm gonna write this as lambda sub k of n, where lambda sub k is simply the k-fold composition of lambda. Okay, so that's cool. So well, what does that really mean we need? Well, observe that our two numbers over there, they match for a bunch of the exponents. They match for obviously the base and the first, second, and third exponents. That means we need those fourth exponents to be incongruent mod, well, a lambda sub four of n. So we need seven to be incongruent to five mod lambda sub four of n. So let's see what that restricts us to. Okay, so, so far we've argued that we need seven to be incongruent mod lambda sub four of n, where lambda, lambda sub four is simply the fourfold composition of our Carmichael lambda function. But using the definition of congruence mod n, this is gonna be equivalent to saying what? To saying that lambda sub four of n does not divide seven minus five or two which means we need lambda sub four of n to be bigger than or equal to three. Well, let's notice that lambda sub four of n is most definitely gonna be even just based off of the way the lambda function behaves. So that means what we really need is for this lambda sub four of n to be bigger than or equal to four. But finding the smallest natural numbers where our two goal numbers are incongruent will lead us pretty quickly to just finding the smallest prime where those are incongruent. Because anytime they're incongruent mod n, they're gonna be incongruent mod, um, let's see, primes that divide in. So we might as well just work with primes here. So in other words, we need to look at lambda sub four of p with p being a prime. And I think maybe the best way to do this is just to look at primes and apply lambda to them a bunch of times. So let's start with three. And let's say that this arrow means we're gonna apply lambda. So lambda of three is pretty obviously equal to two. And then lambda of two is gonna be equal to one. And then we might as well stop because that means lambda sub four of three is equal to one. I guess that's not super surprising, but if lambda sub four of three is equal to one, well, then well, we don't have our condition up there. And then I guess we would move on to five. So five is gonna turn into four, which is gonna turn into two, which is gonna turn into one. But let's see, that means that lambda sub four of five is also gonna be equal to one, which means five won't satisfy our rule either. So let's maybe skip a couple, maybe to the number 29. So if we apply lambda to 29, we'll get 28. And then if we apply lambda to that, what are we gonna get? Well, notice that 28 is the same thing as four times seven. Lambda of four was two, lambda of seven is six. Take the LCM of two and six, you pretty clearly get 12. And then taking lambda of 12, you'll see that you get two. Taking lambda of two, you get one. So even lambda sub four of 29 is equal to one. Now, I'll say that you just continue to play this game and the number that will jump out at you is the number 47. So notice that lambda of 47 will be 46. 46 is equal to two times 23. So lambda of two is one, lambda of 23 is gonna be 22. So that means that we'll be left with the LCM of one and 22, in other words, 22. But 22 is equal to two times 11. So let's see, lambda of that will be equal to 10 for pretty obvious reasons. And then, well, you can calculate pretty easily that lambda of 10 is equal to four. So there we have it. We have lambda of four of 47 is in fact equal to four. And that's the first time that happens. 
So that doesn't tell us that those two are incongruent mod 47. That tells us the first time those might be incongruent is at 47. And all we have to do now is check that those are not the same mod 47. So let's do that. So far, we've motivated the need to look at 7 to the 7 to the 7 to the 7 to the 7 mod 47 versus 7 to the 7 to the 7 to the 7 to the 5 mod 47. Keeping in mind that we're going to reduce mod lambda of 47 or lambda of lambda of 47 and so on and so forth at each exponent. Let's recall that lambda of 47 was equal to 46. Lambda sub 2 of 47 was equal to 22. Lambda sub 3 of 47 was equal to 10. And then finally, lambda sub 4 of 47 was equal to 4. So let's see, that should get us started. So that means we can reduce this exponent way up here, mod 4. So if we reduce that mod 4, we'll get the number 3. If we reduce this mod 4, we'll get the number 1. Okay, but now we'll look at 7 cubed mod, well it's got to be mod 10 because that's the level we're at. So this is going to be congruent to 3 mod 10 and that's because seven to the three is, well, it's gonna be 343. But then this seven to the one, well, that's pretty clearly just equal to seven or congruent to seven mod 10. So that means where are we at the moment? So we're gonna be at seven to the seven to the seven to the three mod 47 for this first one. And then over here, we're gonna be seven to the seven to the seven to the seven mod 47 for this second one. Okay, nice. But now we can look at this seven to the three and keep in mind that we're working mod 22 here because that's the level of exponentiation we're at. But it's pretty easy to calculate that seven to the three mod 22 is 13 modulo 22. And then over here, what are we at? Well, over there, we're at the stage of seven to the seven, and you can calculate that is congruent to 17 mod 22 using like, you know, it's just straightforward arithmetic. So that means this left-hand thing is gonna reduce down to seven to the seven to the 13 mod 47. And over here, this is gonna reduce to seven to the seven to the 17 mod 47. Okay, nice. And then this 7 to the 13 needs to be reduced mod 46. So you can do that and you'll see that 7 to the 13 gets reduced to 43 mod 46. And then this 7 to the 17, well that also needs to be reduced mod 46. And that gets reduced to 19 modulo 46. So that means this left-hand one has simplified down to seven to the 43 mod 47. And this one on the right has simplified down to seven to the 19 mod 47. Those are the last two calculations we need to do. But after doing that calculation, you'll see that this one is congruent to 23 mod 47, whereas this one over here is congruent to 12 mod 47. But that means that our original number way up here is congruent to 23. Our original number way up there is congruent to 12, which means our two original numbers over here are incongruent mod 47, meaning this difference is not divisible by 47. And that's in fact the smallest natural number that does not divide this difference. And that's a good place to stop.